I now proclaim Cersei of the House Lannister, first of her name, Queen of the Andals and the First Men, Protector of the Seven Kingdoms. Long may she reign. Long may she reign. It's been absolutely life-changing to take a character through eight years of evolution. It's just been brilliant, you know. I'm incredibly grateful. I remember very clearly the pilot we shot in Scotland. My queen. I was like, this could just be a pilot. Another job that doesn't go anywhere, but you make the most of it. Yeah, I remember everybody clear. I remember baby Sophie and baby Maisie and baby Isaac. And now they're full grown. Shows your muscles. You'll be a soldier. Ned. I really enjoyed the scene with Mark Addy way back in season one. I'm sorry your marriage to Ned Stark didn't work out. You seemed so good together. Glad I could do something to make you happy. It was so intense and I was like pages and pages long and it was really unexpected from those two characters to be that kind of intimate and honest. And it was one of the best memories for me. Sometimes I don't know what holds it together. Our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you get a glimpse into her marriage with Robert Baratheon and it sort of goes some way to explaining who Cersei is and why she then behaves how she does. Was it ever possible for us? Was there ever a time, ever a moment? No. There's so many people I haven't had a chance to work with, but Pete and Nikolai, I love working with them. And Charles Dance, Jack Gleason, and Conliffe. Those were my nucleus, and I loved every minute with each of them. It's gonna make me cry. 34 apple, take four. V mark. Thanks very much. W mark. And we're rolling. Quiet, please. As an actor, you work and work and work and you audition and you don't get parts and you do get parts and sometimes they're great experiences and sometimes they're really shitty. And this has been incredible. I've had such great material to work with. Every time I open a script, I was like, oh my God, I, I have, you know, for me personally, just to play these moments has been really extraordinary. And I think all of these great twists and turns and, and reveals of who's really who and who's whose daughter, all these, I mean, it's just sort of never ending surprises, which is why I think people love it, putting a big puzzle together. I don't think this is a good idea, Your Grace. Nonsense, Samarin. These are deeply religious people. Where can I find the High Sparrow? My advice to Cersei, <laughs> if you meet a man called the High Sparrow, steer fucking clear of him. The faith and the crown are the two pillars that hold up this world. One collapses, so does the other. We must do everything necessary to protect one another. She believes if she can make an alliance there, she'll gain power, she'll be able to kind of seduce and manipulate the High Sparrow uh, into her way of thinking, and state and church will be one. She couldn't be more wrong about his intentions and his commitment to the righteous. And the High Sparrow brings her in and questions Cersei on murder and incest and the rest of it. Confess. My son. Let me speak to her. Confess. She kind of holds on or through the prison and the trial and the questioning and scepters, <laughs> Lunella's kind of brutal treatment of her. A sinner comes before you to make her walk of atonement. Everyone's become family now. It's all very familiar in the best way. It's very strange without it. I miss it. Guys, I just want to say it's been 
amazing and I have the utmost respect for each and every one. So um, thank you.